Hello and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video we're going to keep on looking at Fate Reforged and we're going to move on to look at Stampeding Hordes, which is a white and red deck. Let's take a look at the deck list. Uh, so we've got 24 creatures, 8 instants, 3 sorceries, 25 land, mana curve off to the side there. Uh, let's let's just dive in and start looking at the uh, at the deck. So the foil face rare. Um and again, like with the Fate Reforged deck, absolutely knocking it out of the park. I think it's such a this is such a good rare. Um Flame Rush Rider. Uh, so four and a red for three three. Uh, whenever it attacks, you put a token onto the battlefield, taps an attacking that's a copy of another attacking creature, and then you exile the token at end of combat. So um Immediately, like, you know, just doubling up on an attacking creature, you know, it obviously can be itself, um, or it can be, you know, one of your other creatures. Uh, yeah, I think that's just, like, a super good ability. But there's more. Uh, it has the um, new, like, Mardu ability, which is Dash. So, like, forget Raid, we're done with Raid, even though Raid is a great mechanic, but it's all right, it's going to come back in Ixalan. Um, so Dash is, uh, t um, so Dash is basically, you can cast it for its Dash cost, and if you do, it gains haste, and it goes um, back to your hand at the beginning of the next end step, it's still on the battlefield. So, um... Uh, if you're a veteran player, if you uh, remember the old, like, Vyashino Sand Scout creatures, like the Vyashinos that like, would come down and have haste and kind of, like, swing once and then bounce back, it's that, um, but a keyword, which um, I, I'm not sure how you feel about Dash. Obviously, it's notorious these days because it's on bloody a certain monkey. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about Dash. I, I prefer Raid to Dash. Um, obviously, there's you know some benefits to, to Dash being able to cast it and like have haste and immediately swing you know while there's an opening. But the downside being, um, it's going to go back to your hand. I suppose like if you're you know if you want to attack, be super aggressive and like oh well my creature's going to die anyway. You might as well dash it. Um, so yeah, I suppose a bit of a skill test mechanic there of like um when when to cast something um. For its normal cost and when to when to dash something, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, this having dashes obviously just makes it more flexible. Um, so you know you, you don't want to well and cheaper as well. So you don't want to commit five mana to it. You can do four, swing with it immediately, get the haste trigger, maybe copy itself, and then like if your opponent's open, that's six damage, which is you know that's not nothing. Um, so yeah, really like Flame Rush Rider. Um, another another great Fate Reforged uh, foil face rare uh, for these decks. Really good, I think. Um, and then we've got like a bunch of other creatures that are just gonna be of different sizes and, and have different like dash costs so we can kind of get through those kind of quickly so we've got two goblin heel cutters uh three and a red for a three two whenever it attacks a creature can't block this turn which is like a you know perfectly good ability um has dash uh for two and a red yep that's fine um yep <laughs> uh we've got two mardi scouts double red for three one and dash for one colors and a red uh so yeah okay pretty much of a muchness there which which you choose to do uh, and we've got two Vault Breakers, three and a red for four two. Uh, whenever it attacks, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card and it has dash for two and a red. Yep, again, that's all. That's all fine. Uh, then we've got two Valley Dashes, which doesn't have dash <laughs> in a complete travesty of card design. Uh, so one and a red for two two with haste. And it has to attack every turn if able. Sure, fine, whatever. It's a red two two with haste with a with a drawback. Sure, whatever. Um, and then we've got two Leaping Masters, uh, one and a red for a 2-1. Uh, you can pay two and a white to give it a flying to end turn. And I sort of went off on about this card um, in a previous deck, but I do think that activation cost is, is really expensive. I'm just really underwhelmed by this creature. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's Goblin Piker with an upside, isn't it? So it's fine. It's fine. Just kind of boring. Uh, two High Spire Mantises. Uh, so two, a red and a white for a 3-3 three, three, flying and trample. Just perfectly good, evasive aggressive creature yeah sure uh two fire hoof cavalry uh one white mana for a one one uh, you can pay three and a red to give it plus two plus not and trample to lend to ten uh yeah it's good nice that it gets trampled along with the power boost so it can you know ride over stuff it's pretty good uh and then two sand step outcast uh two and a white for a two one when it ends the battlefield you choose one it either gets plus one plus one counter or you make a one one flying spirit um talked about this card a bit in the um the warrior deck the um unflinching assault um yeah i like it. i think both those options are, are pretty good it's either a three two by itself or it's a two one and it makes a one one with evasion so yeah i think both those options are pretty good um i think it's a fun little common uh and then we've got two wandering champions uh one and a white for a three one uh when it deals combat damage to a player if you control a blue or a red permanent you may discard a card if you do draw a card um not a hard condition to meet in the deck obviously you're, you're dual killed anyway um, I do really like this kind of cycle of uncommons in um in Fate Reforged, these ones that um 
uh, you know that care if you have either an ally color or an enemy color. Um, I think that I generally I think they're all pretty good from what I remember. Um, the battle brawler, the black one, the um, the orc that gets um plus one plus normal first strike. I think is probably my favorite one, but they're all they're all good. Um, this one is okay. Um, you know the the ability being dependent on combat damage is yeah you know, a little bit of a pain. Um, yeah, because it's it's quite frail as well. Um, so it's kind of you know people don't want you to get a card draw, so it's kind of incentivizing to block it, I suppose. Um, and it's not quite a loot effect; it's a rummage effect. It's it's okay. I mean, it's some card draw in white and red, which at the time is you know still kind of a bit ropey. It's it's okay. At the very least, it's a three one for two without a drawback, so it's fine. Um, and then a single Geist of the Moors from M15, uh, one and double white for a three one flyer. Uh, sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure there were better, better cards in in sets, um, either in cards or in Fate Reforged. This could have been. Not sure why they need to uh, waste an uncommon slot on this, but it is what it is. Um, and then a single Razor Foot Griffin, three and a white for a two two with flying and first strike. Yep, we've all seen Razor Foot Griffin a million times before. Um, a single Thundering Giant, three and double red for a four three with haste. Sure, um, and two Goblin Rough Riders, two and a red for just a three two. Again, sure. A um, little little disappointing towards there in terms of creatures. Uh, so non-creature spells. So the other red in the deck is Deflecting Palm. Uh, so a single red and a white. Um, instant speed. The next time a source of your choice would deal damage to you, um, this turn you prevent that damage. And if you prevent the damage, it deals that much damage to your source of control. So you just reflect the damage back onto them, which is really um, fun. It's, you know, it's a um, kind of a... It's a red white effect that like is common enough for it to be like oh yeah it's cool when you see it like a sort of retaliation ability but it doesn't show up enough for it to be like, to feel boring so it's always nice when it does show up. Um, it's stuff like um you know spite mare or um the uh, like boros reckoner that kind of stuff. I know that's not preventing damage; it's like reflecting damage, but you get what I mean. Um, but yeah, this I think is a pretty um pretty fun rare. You know, it's it's nice and cheap. Um, you know, and prevents you know. Be able to prevent a lot of damage. It's a shame it's a damage only to you and not to like a creature. I'm probably getting a little greedy there, wishing it could prevent damage to like creature you control as well. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. Obviously, you can just let something through and then do this, prevent that damage and just um, deflect it back and potentially, you know, win. Oh, it's nice when you can win during your opponent's attack phase, you know? So that's all combat phase, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I think that's a, a fine uh, alternate, uh, fine other rare to have. Um, a single ride down, uh, so one red, one white. Uh, you destroy target blocking creature, and creatures that were blocked by that creature this combat gain trample until, until end of turn. So the whole gist of this is you you kill whatever was blocking one of your creatures, you give it trample, so then it can still assign damage to um, the defending player. Um, and I got into it, when I went to the um, Khan's pre-release, I got into a huge argument with my opponent over this because like, I don't know. <laughs> they, you know, we just had a different understanding of the rules. Um, yeah, and it was like this huge, a really big disagreement, and just waste a lot of time um, because, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it was a, it was a, it was a pain. Um, but that aside, I think it's like a pretty, pretty fun card. You know, it's this kind of standard, you know, uh, white destroyer blocker effect, but the fact that it's add, adding trample as well. So it's just essentially like as if your creature was never blocked in the first place. I think it's, I think it's just a really like fun design. I think it's really nice. Uh, and then we've got two Warflare, uh, two red and white. Um, creature you control, get plus two, plus one to lend and, and untap them. Um, you know, instant speed for four mana, I think this is pretty strong. Like a board wide buff and untapping everything, I think is pretty good. Um, you're gonna you're kind of going wide with a bunch of kind of like small aggressive creatures in here. So um, yeah, I think this is I think it's a pretty good effect. You know, the toughness boost is actually quite appreciated as well. So you do have a lot of small creatures. Um, so yeah, this is um, good. I'm happy there's two of them in here. Um, a single collateral damage, uh, one red mana. Uh, as additional cost to cast it, you have to sacrifice a creature and it does three damage to a creature or player. Um, obviously, you know this. This is we have lightning bolt at home. <laughs> um, it's it. I mean, it's fine. I would prefer it to. I think just to be lightning strike, which I'd rather pay the extra mana. But if you've got a um, creature that's going to die in combat anyway, you might as well have this on hand just to sacrifice it and do um, throw out three damage somewhere else. So yeah, it's okay. A uh, single bathe in, bathe in dragonfire, just two in red, do uh, four damage to target creature. Yep, it's okay for three at sorcery speed, at common, I suppose it's fine. Um, and then pyrotechnics, this is a really nice um, classic reprint here, pyrotechnics. Uh, four in a red, does four damage to as you choose amongst any number of target creatures or players. Obviously the dream being you kill four creatures with this, um, get a four for one. But um, yeah, just being able to split four damage is like, surprisingly quite flexible. You can do um, quite a lot with it. So yeah, um, really, yeah glad pyrotechnics is, is in here. Uh, we've got two heat rays for so sex and a red. Does X damage to target creature? Sure. 
sure it's fine just get blockers out of the way um a single dragon rage this is quite interesting so two and a red uh you add red to your mana pool for every attacking creature you control until end of turn attacking creature you control um basically get fire breathing um so this is really nice so if you attack with uh four creatures you get four red mana and then you can essentially um distribute that four red mana um any other red mana you've got um to increase their power so yeah i think this, this is a really like fun combat trick like temporary fire breathing and also generating a bunch of mana um yeah, the mana's only there for, like, your combat step. It's not going to, like, carry over into other phases, which is a, you know, bit of a shame. But, like, you, you can only use it really for, for that effect. Um, but, yeah, it's okay. Um, I, I say, you know, use it for that effect. You can use it, obviously, for instance, um, during combat as well. So, there we go. Um, kind of flexible, actually, what it could do. So, yeah, fun. I like this. It's a fun card. Um, and then a single act of treason. Uh, we all know what act of treason does. Just gain control or something until end of turn, which is fine. G again, gets a blocker out of the way. And, you know, always always fun to potentially kill an opponent with their own creature. So, yeah. Uh, and then three Windscarred Crag, which is the red-white gain land. Um, and then 13 Mountain and nine planes. So, yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward overall as a deck. It's just white-red aggro, isn't it? Um, so let's talk about alternate rares. So the Flame Rush Rider, I think, is pretty good. Um, and the other rare was the Deflecting Palm, wasn't it? Which was which was also okay. Um, I kind of just want to talk about the alternate rares. I'm 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 happy with the with the cards that are here, but again, it wouldn't be one of these Fate Reforged videos. Fate Reforged videos if I didn't say I really wish the Khan had been in here. Um, so in this case, Alicia, who smiles at death. Uh, so two in a red for a three two with first strike. So again, just like good stats, off the bat, and then. Uh, whenever Alicia attacks, uh, you can pay um, two Orzhov hybrid mana, and if you do, you get a creature card with power two or less from your graveyard onto the battlefield, taps and attacking. Um, you've got a bunch of, kind of like small creatures anyway, so yeah, this is good. Just a, um, you know, like a, a constant kind of like raised dead effect is, um, well, it's a reanimation effect, isn't it? Again, I just think that would have been fun. I think all these Khans should have just been in their, in their decks. So I just think they're just such fun, fun creatures. Um, outpost siege as well as a possibility here or well, again all these sieges are very very strong um, so three in red for an enchantment when it ends the battlefield you choose Khans or dragons so Khans is at the beginning of your upkeep you exile the top code of your library and until end of turn you can play it so it's um, some red impulse draw or if you choose dragons whenever a creature control leaves the battlefield outpost siege does one damage to a crucial player so your dashing creatures going back to your hand would trigger this do extra damage I mean if they, even if they just die in combat as well that helps um, but I think the the um, intended synergies there's with the dash stuff so either of those would have been you know good rares to have um and then going back to what i said about that geist of the moors um i think a better card would have been paragon of fierce defiance is to to fill the uncommon slot there so paragon of fierce defiance three in red for a two two gives all your other red creatures plus one plus one you've got mostly red creatures in the deck it is it is tilted more towards red this deck um, and it has this uh, ability you can pay one red and tap, give another red creature haste until end turn. Kind of redundant because pretty much all the red creatures in here either have haste already or have dash, so you can gain haste. But, you know, just the option if you play one of the things without dash and you want it to attack anyway, you've got it haste. It's mostly here just because it's an anthem effect for your red creatures, which are generally kind of on the smaller side. So that's a possibility. The other, you could have had the other paragon in here as well, the white paragon, which gives them um, white creatures vigilance. But I think the red one would have fit in more just to um, have that effect. Um, so yeah, overall, I think this one's like pretty solid. Um, again, I think the rares are really good. Um, I don't think there's any like necessarily like super bad cards in here. I think it's like a pretty solid mix of, you know, like what we expect from red, white aggro. Yeah, like small aggressive creatures, like some with evasion. Um, yeah, and you know, just some good combat tricks, some like, uh, you know, some burn as well to get you know potential like blockers out of the way and stuff. Uh, so yeah, I think this one is pretty pretty solid. Um, yeah, like all the I say, I, I think Fate Reforged. I I was not actually because I, I didn't really know much about the Fate Reforged decks, and I started putting them together, just like man, I really like these. I like these a lot more than the Khan's decks. Um, yeah, I think they're I think they're really good. Would have really liked would have really liked to have the whole set of them honestly, but yeah. Never, never, never bought them. But what do you think of this deck after looking at it? Um, if you have any thoughts or stories or comments or opinions about the deck or any of the cards in it, um, stick a comment below. I'll give those a read. Always like doing that. And I'll be back next time going to look at the last Fate Reforged intro pack. But until then, thanks for watching and listening and have a great day.